In this video, we will learn about buck converter and how to simulate a buck converter. Buck converter is one type of DC to DC converter. So, DC to DC converter converts DC input voltage into DC output voltage. So, it can actually step up the input voltage or step down the input voltage. However, even if the output voltage is DC, it still contains some AC component or ripple. Here is an example of a basic uh, implementation of step down converter. So on the left side, we can see the circuit diagram. A supply voltage Vs is applied to the load R and the supply and load is connected with the help of a switch SW. So if the switch is closed for the time T1, then we get a voltage in our output. And for the time T2, when the switch is open, we don't have any voltage drop in our loop. So the average output voltage can be calculated if we uh, if we integrate the output voltage from time zero to T one, then we get we get this formula because when the switch is closed, the output voltage is equal to the input or supplied voltage. The term T1 divided by capital T is also called the duty cycle which is represented by the term K. So we can generate duty cycle in various ways. So here is an example. Uh, we can use a comparator. One voltage can be a periodic sawtooth signal that is our carrier signal VCR and a DC reference voltage VR and we can actually uh, adjust the duty cycle uh, by varying the reference voltage. So we can see that whenever the reference voltage is greater than the carrier voltage the comparator produces a positive output and uh, after this point the reference voltage is lesser than the carrier voltage so the comparator produces zero voltage so so this duty cycle can be uh, supplied to the gate of a mosfet for example to drive our buck converter here is an example of a circuit diagram of buck converter so we have our supply and our load and our switch here yeah, they have used a transistor but in our simulation we will use a MOSFET this is the control circuit which will produce the duty cycle and it can take feedback from here to adjust the duty cycle as necessary there is an inductor connected in series with the switch and the capacitor C which is in parallel with the load and there is also a freewheeling valve which will help the energy dissipate when the switch is closed so whenever the switch is closed the circuit becomes like this. The supply voltage is connected through the inductor to the load. So the supply current IS goes through the inductor and to the load. And when the switch is open, then the entire supply side is disconnected from the load and the remaining energy in the inductor flows like this and is dissipated because of the resistance in the circuit. So during time T1 when the switch is closed the inductor current is assumed to rise linearly from I1 to I2 and when the switch is open 
during 22 the inductor current pops. Uh, so we have a delta i which is the peak to peak ripple inductor current. Similarly for the capacitor the current slowly rises linearly also and it also falls and uh, for that reason we also have ripple voltage in the capacitor. So for the buck converter our average output voltage is expressed by VA which depends on the supply voltage and the duty ratio. So for example if our supply voltage is 12 volt and we want 6 volt for our output then the due to ratio has to be 50% or 0.5. Peak to peak inductor ripple current delta I is expressed by Vs multiplied by K multiplied by 1 minus K divided by the switching frequency F multiplied by the value of the inductor. Yeah. And peak to peak capacitor ripple voltage delta Vc depends on the following formula supply voltage Vs multiplied by due to cycle K multiplied by 1 minus K divided by 8 inductor value L capacitor value C multiplied by the square of the switching frequency. So for our design problem which we will simulate today we are taking the input voltage as 12 volt and we, we would like to have our output voltage on average to be 6 volt. We can keep the switching frequency at 25 kilohertz but if we are using IGBT or MOSFET then the switching frequency can be extended further. And according to our specification we want to keep 20 millivolt for our capacitor ripple voltage peak to peak and for our peak to peak inductor ripple current we want to keep it as 0.8 ampere. So if we, if we use these formulas, these three formulas, we can calculate the values for inductor capacitor and the DT ratio. So the DT ratio has to be 50% and if we use this formula for delta I, we can calculate the value for the inductor which uh, becomes 145.83 microhenry. And using this formula for delta Vc, we can calculate the value of capacitor and it's 200 microfarad. So let's go and simulate our buck converter circuit. We will design and simulate our buck converter using this freely available LTS based software. To download this software, go to analog.com, then go to design center and you can download it from these two links. So for Windows, use this link or if you are using Mac, then you can download from here. You can also get some flyers and information from this page. So let's check the shortcut. I accept. And here you can find some key shortcuts there. So here we are. So you can see that you can use the function keys to do various commands. For example, to draw you can use F3, you can get the component list from F2, you can move using F7 and there are also other keyboard shortcuts for example to select a register you just simply press R and for ground you just simply press G. So here you can see that the component list comes up when you press F2. And if you want to rotate, then you can use Ctrl R. And for mirroring, Ctrl E. Let's begin our simulation. So first, open up LT Spice. 
create a new and blend schematic. We can use the shortcut key F2 to bring up the library menu. First, we will select the voltage source. Let's put it here. Then we will get our in channel MOSFET. Control R to rotate it. Then let's get our inductor. Rotate. Place it here. Then we can get our capacitor. And our load register. We can also get our tire. And to generate pulse voltage, we will use a normal voltage source in this simulation. So we'll keep it here. Okay. Let's use F3 to bring up the wire and connect the components. We need to rotate the dial, so let's select the dial. The shortcut for ground is G. Okay. Now let's label the input side. V in. And output. Yeah. Okay. Now we can start to configure the components one by one. So first start with the voltage source. Let's give it a value of 12 volt DC. We rename it as V in. Then our MOSFET. Let's choose a commercial MOSFET from the menu. Okay. So we can choose this one because it has VDS 20 volt, which is greater than our supply voltage 12 volts. So and the uh, on state resistance is also on the lower side. It's not too much. So we can use this one. Let's configure our pass generator. We need to go to the advanced tab then choose the pulse option then initial voltage 0 on voltage 12 volt delay 0 then rising rising time 1 nanosecond falling time also 1 nanosecond then t on we can define it as a parameter so our duty ratio let's say it's d multiplied by the time period the switching time period yes then again time period is TS let's choose a doubt let's, let's choose a doubt from the list uh, I would like to use the short key doubt because of better performance let's see which can we choose yeah this seems okay this has a good current level 7.5 amps so 
let's choose this one let's rename it as dal rename this one as our switch pulse then give it a value of 143 micro for our inductor uh, for realistic simulation we can uh, give it some series resistance let's give it 20 million ohm inductor now capacitor so from our calculation uh, the capacitor value should be 200 microfarad so 200 micro series resistance we can give it some series resistance let's give it a little 1 milli ohm okay. rename capacitor then load uh, we can keep it just 1 ohm So our circuit construction is more or less complete. Now we need to set the SPICE directives. So to get the SPICE directive menu, you just need to press S on your keyboard. So first we will define parameters. So dot param. The first parameter would be the ratio D, which, is, which should be 0 0.5. Okay. Next. Our switching period. Now, um, our switching frequency was 25 kilohertz, which means that uh, we can get the period if we uh, take the inverse of this value. So it would be 40 micro. Now let's define the simulation type. So we want to do transient analysis so dot tram then for how long uh, it should run we have to specify so let's say 5 milliseconds so our circuit is ready for simulation to run the simulation we just have to press this run button so if we press this run button this scope opens up okay. then let's say we first check the inductor current so we just press it here so this is a pretty good curve so we can check the delta i from here uh, we can just zoom it a little bit and then press it here now we can check the delta So the delta is almost 900 milliampere. So from our calculation, the peak-to-peak -peak inductor ripple current was 800 milliampere, but uh, in our simulation, we are getting a little bit more. Okay. Now we can check the output voltage. So let's check the output voltage here. This seems to be nice shape. Um, at a steady state, it achieves 5.6 volts, which is uh, not exactly 6 volt as we have hoped for, but uh, it's pretty close. The reason for the uh, the variation in the voltage value and the current value is because we are using the real real life values like. Uh, Close it because we are using series resistance here also with the capacitor and we are also using the practical diodes and practical models of uh, MOSFETs so that's why there is a, a, dif a difference between values uh, theoretical values and uh, simulated values okay. so let's check the voltage again Zoom a little. 
and from here we can actually check the delta so delta is 23.5 millivolt which is a little bit uh, more than our specification 20 millivolt so that is it for now so we have learned how to design a buck converter how to place these values how to write spice directives and finally how to uh, run the simulation and check for current and voltage values of the circuits thank you